all tuning in to the CHGO White Sox pregame show presented by PointsBet. Use promo code CHGO when you sign up to get two or three bets up to $2,000. Welcome into the CHGO studios. This is Studio A in our West Loop offices. Lawrence absolutely threw me off uh, walking in here right before the show. Um, the countdown me, was like at 10 and he was like giving you information. Yeah, he's, he's like, hey, you got a show at 4.30. Yep, I'll worry about that at 4.30. He flustered you. But I'll tell you this. We are we are feeling way better today than we did last night. Oh, that, last night was that, still fun. It was fine, but man, it was. I was walking out of here and I was like, "It's late. I'm so tired." <laughs> yeah, like I was not. I was usually I can mentally prepare myself for a West Coast game. Last night it caught me off guard. I think I'm. I think I'm more out of it this morning than I was last. This night. This morning it's two thirty in the afternoon. Yeah, <laughs> he wakes up at noon. <laughs> I woke up at ten thirty, but still, you know, I, it's it's a slow wake up for me. It's just. <laughs> I need some coffee, uh, and it's slow. I didn't even introduce us. I'm Sean Anderson. You can follow me on Twitter at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. Alongside me, Vinny Duber, who apparently has the energy of a bunny and can just wake up, you know, pop out of bed and just be ready to go. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter at Vinny Duber. He's a CHGO White Sox beat writer. And the man in the middle is Herb Lawrence. Hello. You can follow him on Twitter at Ecknerwall23. Uh, he's a CHGO White Sox community leader. We are here to preview the rubber match of the White Sox and Mariners. The White Sox are 68 and 68 at 500 for the 25th time this year. The Seattle Mariners are at 77 and 59. They're 10 games back in their division, uh, but they're well above 500, which I just find hilarious, you know, being 10 games back and the White Sox are three games back and they've just been struggling to be above 500. How nice it must be. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about the Central. We were talking about cereals before the show, but uh, Vinny said that's way too important. Got to save that for the, you know, the 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 actual podcast, yeah. uh, the stuff that's going to be archived one day in the National Library. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we, ha- we have to save the serial draft for later. Um, we'll have Stephen probably make up some graphics and everything. Absolutely. we got to give Steve Stephen time to work on that. You, he gets you, a whole game to work well, on that. Maybe we should decide first pick on pregame show. What, how are we going to do that? Um, I don't want it. Well, I'll, I can tell you guys this. Herb got first pick for click to pick, so if anything... Should yeah. probably be last on this one. Okay, and Stephen, you're yeah. gonna have a pick too. You'll you'll be in this oh, draft. I, I'm gonna be very involved in this one. Yes, absolutely. All right, Stephen, we'll figure out. We'll start talking about the White Sox. Um, figure out how we're gonna <laughs> draft. All right. I want the fourth pick. Snake. Though. It's got to be Snake. Well, yeah, Snake for you sure. Guys were you guys were doing your draft order. You guys were doing your CHGO Fantasy Football League draft last night. You were very into it. Yeah. That's how excited I am about this cereal draft <laughs> coming up. And how many cereal? In the, in the how many cereal rounds are we going? Like, I think four. four? Yeah. yeah, I think four makes so, sense. All right. yeah. So 16 cereals we're talking yeah. about? All right. Should be a fun time. So join us for cereal talk uh, after the White Sox game. It only took us 137 games to get to this point. Um, to, to break us. Um, but anyways, let's look at the AL Central. Sox are three games back, 68 and 68. Minnesota Twins, 68 and 65. They're one and a half games back. They have a doubleheader today against the Yankees, and the Guardians are 70 and 64. They're wrapping up a series with the Royals. Right now, the Twins in game one lead two to nothing against the Yankees. Uh, Herb, I really haven't checked in too much with you just because you were in Atlanta. Yep. How are you feeling about the Twins? Um, you know, watching that series against the Sox and the Twins, the fact that Bucks been out. Uh, they saw Tyler Maley uh, just basically have a just dead shoulder uh, on Saturday. Uh, are you feeling like they're still a threat being one and a half games out of the Central? I never have. I never thought they were the best in the cream of the class of the AL Central. I think the Guardians are the best team in the Central right now, as the record shows, and the team that I worried about the most from the beginning of not the, the season, I worried about the Tigers more, but once they start playing, I was like, okay, that Guardians thing's a thing because they put bats a ball like no other. They don't strike out a lot. They have great pitchers at the top of their rotation with Bieber up there. Tristan McKenzie's turning into a thing. And in the back end with Karen Cech, uh stepping, and then uh, Manuel Classe. They have a team that can go a little further in the playoffs than the White Sox or the Twins. I think if they get in, that's a team that you should be scared of. I think it's funny that you didn't mention, mention Carlos Correa at all. Um, he's been in the AL Central, but you really haven't felt his presence nope. at all. I, I don't know what you make of that, Vinny, but it, it's weird that you see the Twins go out and make a $100 million signing, and he's had two home runs against the Sox. Kind of heard a little bit from him in the last series, but uh, you think them adding a superstar of that level would make a little bit more noise. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think of it this way. You know, how uh, long have White Sox fans, you know, been tortured and tormented by Jose Ramirez playing in Cleveland? Did it stop? The White Sox from winning the Central last year? Nope. Did Jose Ramirez, you know, kicking the snot out of them, uh, as he always does, really stop them from, doing, from winning the way they did last year? Has he stopped them so greatly from 
from still being in contention this year, right? Uh, I think it goes to show you that a player of that caliber, because I do think Jose Ramirez is fantastic, and I'm not trying to say anything against him, but a player of that caliber on a team full of players of that caliber makes you a World Series contender. You look at Houston, you look at the Dodgers, you look at some of the other teams this year who are making so much noise, and when you've got one guy on a team that is otherwise fine or average or even good but not amazing, uh, like you said, it's maybe not felt quite as much. And Carlos Correa, I, I really believe he is one of those players, maybe not to the extent Ramirez is, but certainly he's up there. But when, when, when he doesn't have Alex Bregman there and when he doesn't have Jordan Alvarez there and when he doesn't have Jose Altuve there, all of a sudden it's a vastly different landscape that he's living in and he's seeing it right now. Well, I think it's funny too, looking at the White Sox, like they don't technically have a $100 million player, but I think you can make an argument that someone might pay Tim Anderson, $100 million or more uh, for a certain contract. Uh, Luis Robert, I think if he had the season he did last year and didn't sign his extension uh, before he started his MLB career, he might have been a $100 million player, especially seeing the uh, contract that Juan Soto or, or will get and then uh, Julio Rodriguez did get with the Mariners. Uh, and then Aloy, you know, if, if he was a little bit healthier, maybe he would have been a $100 million player. Um, but I, I do think it's funny that... And remember that MVP who you're leaving off the conversation there, too. Is he a $100 million player, though? Well, I'm just saying, he won an MVP. He spent a season as the best player in the American League. I think <laughs> if Jose Abreu, yeah. all things being equal, if he would have started his career in a regular, drafted by the MLB, and had six years with the White Sox, yes, he was free agent year, he would have been $200, $300 million guy. He got a good contract coming out of Cuba from the White Sox and then decided, hey, I want to be a White Sox again. And pretty much, I mean, it's a, a good deal, but it was hometown discount. Well, I think that's basically what I was trying to push together, though, is the Sox have all these guys that have all this talent. And it's just like the Guardians, even though they have Jose Ramirez, like they, they signed him to that extension and built around him to be division contenders. The Twins added Correa to hopefully, you know, take them to possibly a playoff contention, but at least to be competitive or more competitive in the division. And the Sox really haven't added, but they're still competitive in this division. I think that's what gives me the most are still giving me faith in the Sox to still be able to turn around just because they still have all that talent. But again, it's just been, you know, watching a hundred and what, 36 games of 500 baseball. It's just been so confusing. And I like the move that they did with Korea. It was out of the blue. No one expected that. They expected more of the Yankees or the Cubs to get Korea, but they still had a glaring weakness at the starting pitcher, and they still have it right now. That's why they had to go out and get Tyler Malley and he's not done a good job. Traded for Sonny Gray, he's fine, but they needed a top-level starter if they want to match the Carlos Correa move that they did. I assume this next year, you know, if Carlos Correa decides to come back for his second year, they would go out and get a front-level pitcher because they don't have a lot on the books as far as that. And uh, if Buxton ever stays healthy, watch out, friends. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's the same thing with Luis Roberts, same thing with Loy. Carlos Correa is the same guy. I mean, watching them, watching the Twins here last weekend, he's making brilliant plays in, in the field. I mean, he's getting on base. He hit that home run. I mean, he's still the same guy, and he can make the same impact. It's just there's not like, you know, 18 guys in the same lineup that you're worried about like there was in Houston. Right. It's so funny, though, that, um, you know, the Twins have the best run differential at plus 25 in this division. Guardians at plus 22. Sox still uh, negative run differential. They haven't been able to get uh, over that hump uh, just yet. And the Sox have had the best uh, record in September. Hasn't been uh, that large of a, uh, uh, a sample just yet uh, out of the AL Central. But they have four wins in the month of September. They're four and two. The Twins are one and four. And the Guardians only have two wins they're two and three um so and, and the guardians kind of had a bad rut there they lost five straight but that just tells you what it's like to have a cushion you know they still have a three game cushion we're talking about the twins kind of being out of it or you are um and they're one and a half games back so uh the Sox, i really think that they you know really can't afford to lose this game uh the fact that you have another series on the table you've just won two in a row against the uh, royals and twins the fact that you have this on the table i thought Yesterday would have been a lot easier, a lot nicer. Wouldn't have put this much pressure on today's game. But are you looking at it as a vital game for the Sox today, uh, especially looking at how we just saw the division and how close the Sox are? Yeah, they need to win today because I I assume that the Cleveland Guardians are going to beat the Kansas City Royals today as they mostly do uh, throughout the year. But the only uh, ray of hope I have is the Kansas City Royals have three walk-offs this year at Kauffman Stadium, two of them versus the Cleveland Guardians. So maybe they can do that again today. But, yeah, the White Sox need to keep pace with them. Going down four games uh, would be not very good because these two teams, the Minnesota Twins and the Guardians, have a weekend series versus each other, eight more games the rest of the year. So it's 
uh, advantageous for the White Sox to get this game versus the Seattle Mariners, a good team, which they beat two out of three here at uh, Guaranteed Great Field, and then go four games out in Oakland and get three out of four at minimum. And definitely put a hole into that Cleveland Guardians uh, lead that they have right now because you're talking about how the Guardians have struck, struggled in September. They struggled because they were playing these hot Mariners, and the White Sox ran into them too. But if you can get two out of three and improve from where Cleveland did, you pick up a game from them uh, from what they did last weekend versus the uh, Mariners. Well, and we did see uh, back in June, uh, the Sox went out to L.A. They lost two or three against the Angels, but then end up sweeping the Giants. So maybe they could pull off something like that in Oakland uh, and end up winning four games out of this seven games uh, series on the West Coast. Uh, let's look at the starting lineup today for this matchup. Uh, the White Sox leading off is going to be uh, Elvis Andrus at shortstop, batting second, Yohan Makata at third base, batting third, Jose Abreu at first base, batting fourth, Aloy Jimenez at designated hitter, batting fifth, Gavin Sheets in right field, batting sixth, Andrew Vaughn in left field, batting seventh, A.J. Pollock out in center field, batting eighth, Josh Harrison at second base, and batting ninth, Sebi Zavala at catcher. Uh, there is an update from Miguel Cairo on Luis Robert, who came out last night after two at-bats. Uh, quote, he's doing okay. It's going to be day-to-day, -day, so we're going to see how he feels tomorrow. Cairo said... Is I said issue is combination quote where he got hit on fingers and I guess the left wrist is still a little sore. So uh, we did see first pitch against Logan Gilbert uh, ran in on him, hit him on the hands. Uh, so I thought it was maybe more of a wrist issue. He ended up backing up in the box, kind of stepping away. Uh, so I guess it did just run in and actually hit him on the hands. Uh, so he probably should have just not finished that at bat out and went on first base uh, is what I'm learning. I mean, let alone have it had a second at bat. <laughs> truly. Yeah. Yeah, he. Uh, I mean, he swung at that pitch, so there was no way he could have, you know, got to first base because he was uh, offering at that pitch. You know, Luis is a free swinger, so even pitches that are going right at his wrist, he's like, hey, let me get that one. Yeah, and, and I thought this was interesting, too, uh, just reading Daryl's uh, Twitter timeline. Uh, Sox are 2-12 and 12, uh, in the Coliseum, so we were just talking about that. Uh, Sox 2-12 and 12 in the Coliseum since uh, July 2017, including the postseason. Uh, so there's also raccoons. There's bugs there's and possums. There's, oh, possums. I mean, I'm sure there are raccoons, <laughs> but there is confirmed uh, possum activity. Possums, ants that will eat your laptop, yeah. and the Oakland A's. Those Correct. Are the actual and three scariest things in the ballpark. And the clubhouse floods with sewage. sewage. Yep. And the last time the White Sox were there, uh, Aloy got hit with a foul ball while just sitting in the dugout. Oh, good. Oh, great. On the oh, knee, I right? Remember I took yes. it right off the knee. Well, and then yes. in the, yeah. the postseason game, he came in, hit a double, and then hurt his knee running. Too. Well, yeah, that was because he yeah. was already injured. Well, this was just this is just bad Coliseum juju. It's just an ugly place. <laughs> um, I do want to play a little game with you guys because um, Daryl tweeted this out, and I honestly don't know if I can do this. Can you give me the first names of these ace pitchers? Spears. Brittany. Okay. Aaron. Okay. Caprillion. James. Okay. Yeah, that I know was, that one. That I don't have a joke for that. We faced him. <laughs> Martinez. Edgar. Love him. I don't know. JT. I don't know. Irvin. <laughs> Michael. Magic. All right, it was Cole. <laughs> so I know two of the four first names out of these guys because he just tweeted last names. I don't know who Spears and Martinez is. Um, so again, looking at this, the White Sox shouldn't be two and twelve or you know two and sixteen against the this A's is the team that we made fun of right when they came to Chicago like Seth Brown I was like who the hell is this guy Ooh, downtown Seth Brown and he hit like a bunch of home runs that weekend <laughs> yeah yeah well, Herb, you he did a four, segment on is it a real name or is this an Oakland day I think yeah he, I think Seth Brown hit more home runs than yeah, the White we did Sox that game. did all weekend yeah um, that was a game remember that, remember that fun game yeah no it wasn't it wasn't that fun. Oakland A but didn't the White Sox win that one because that was the Alloy game it was that Elvis was, Andres Elvis Andres was on the team then this is the Elvis Andres Revenge Weekend. Oh, it is the Elvis Andres Revenge Weekend. The very much uh, not reported on Elvis Andres weekend, uh, Revenge Weekend. I wonder why. Um, yeah, the, I mean, the Sox won two or three against Oakland back in July. So they, those games weren't that annoying, right? Oh, my God, they were. This, Seth Brown just kept on hitting home runs all the damn time. There was a no-name team, and we're losing most of those games. And then I think they we won two or three. Yeah, they eventually came back and won those games, but... It's goddamn Oakland A's. James one Caprillion, those, I think, was doing yeah. well in that game. Was Six one of those the, uh, the walk-off uh, wild pitch? Uh, yes, yeah. one of those was the walk-off wild pitch. Yeah. Uh, that was the uh, Adam Engel yeah, scoring on a wild pitch. Uh, and then Gavin Sheets saving the day with a home run. Uh, but yeah, Sean Murphy, uh, Seth Brown had a home run in that walk-off game. Uh, Seth Brown, Elvis Andrews had a home run off Lance Lynn uh, in the first game. I wonder if they've talked about that. Uh, <laughs> Seth Brown hit two in that former first Rangers game as well. teammates too. Yep, Lance and Elvis, and no, well, and then former and foes in the 2011 World Series. Correct. Yeah. Oh, they go. They have, a they have quite the history. I wonder if they're right. like. 
pen pals. You should, you should write on this. I you should. I wonder if they've got like a Thomas Jefferson, John Adams thing going on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, They're going to die on the same day? Who knows? Did they? Many, many years from now. Yes, yes. <laughs> I thought I, one of the, somebody, I don't know if that was Thomas Jefferson and John yeah. Adams who died in the same day. Yeah, so they hated 4th? each other when they were, you know, active. Yeah. And then they became pen pals and friends uh, in their later years, and they died on the same day, which was also the 4th of July. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. All right. Shout, shout out to Thomas Je- Sky <laughs> I mean, Point. I mean, they're Sky not going to hear Thomas it. Jefferson and, and John Adams. All right. Let's look at the Mariners. I'm like, what is this lineup. internet? Um. <laughs> <laughs> the internet, you think, would be the first thing to scare them? Not yeah. a, a car? Car. <laughs> <laughs> a refrigerator. Building? Maybe a tall building? What are these moving pictures? What is this air conditioning? <laughs> All right. Uh, Mariners lineup. Uh, wow, what's this live stream? Uh, leading <laughs> off for the Mariners, Julio Rodriguez in center field. $400 million. Could you imagine you told Thomas Jefferson that they're paying that kid $400 million to play baseball? He would have other problems with that, but yes, I got it. <laughs> well, that's fair. Hey, that's why the Mariners, uh, that one Mariners guy got <laughs> fired because uh, he was being all racist towards Julio. All right, Julio Rodriguez uh, out in center field. Leading off, Ty France. Second, uh, leading, uh, at second, uh, not at second. Batting second, Ty France at first base. Batting third, Mitch Hanniger at designated hitter. Batting fourth, Eugenio Suarez at third base. Batting fifth, Jesse Winker at, in left field. Batting sixth, Adam Frazier at second base. Batting seventh, Taylor Trammell uh, in right field. Batting eighth, Kurt Caselli, my guy, uh, at catcher. And batting ninth, J.P. Crawford at shortstop. Uh, Not a former Padres in that lineup there. Who, Trammell? Ty France, Trammell, and uh, Adam Frazier. Your guy. Yeah, Exactly. <laughs> Uh, did you guys see Mount Rainier was uh, was uh, was exploding? Was exploding? Is it is it volcano? Well, if someone had this video, a reporter had this video, it was like, oh, look at the flume coming out. It's uh, I think it's a uh, steaming or venting uh, is the term for uh, for volcanoes. Really? Uh, yeah, and, and Ma- exciting. Mount Rainier, uh, notably one of the sixteen uh, decade volcanoes, right? Uh, Vesuvius being one of them, uh, it hasn't erupted since fourteen twenty six. And someone on Twitter in the replies was like, at volcano expert, uh, hey, what is this? And they're like, oh, we have have a team up there right now they reported it was a cloud a cloud yes so don't worry mount rainier is not venting in seattle it's just it was just a cloud it's pretty I, far away from seattle it, it's a, I you can it. It see it because it's so seattle. tall but yeah it's pretty far away sean i just learned you're a big volcano guy in that well i did i was like. i was getting all excited i was going to make graphics like this is how tall mount rainier is this is all crazy hasn't happened in over 600 i mean thomas jefferson and john adams weren't even alive yeah, 1426 they weren't even no. around right uh, so, you know, I, I thought this was going to be a historical event. Uh, no, it was just a cloud. So, I just I got bummed out. Uh, yeah, it's not erupting. It's just an appearance of steam. Mm. Uh, it's, a, yeah, oh, 59 miles south-southeast of Seattle. Yeah, it's far. So I took that as by Seattle. <laughs> volcano volcano, volcano draft. draft. Ooh, <laughs> that'd be a good one. <laughs> Let's uh, Vesuvius is number one, clearly. Uh, let's go to the pitching matchup for today. Uh, it's Michael Kopech. He's back on the mound. Uh, Matt Foster going down to Charlotte. He's been optioned is the corresponding move. Kopech in 110 and two-thirds innings has a 3.58 ERA. It's allowed 79 hits, 98 Ks, and 55 walks, and a 112 ERA+. plus. Luis Castillo has 122 and two-thirds innings pitched, a 271 ERA, 94 hits allowed, 133 strikeouts, 37 walks and an ERA plus of 157. MLB average is 100. Uh, kind of shocking just seeing first Kopech, this being his first venture uh, as a starter or healthy as a starter after being in the bullpen. I know he little, had a little bit of a stint in 2018 coming up, but he only had about four starts. Uh, crazy to see him at 110 and two-thirds innings, even with the little bit of blips of injuries that he's had this year, and Luis Castillo at 122 innings being a possible AL Cy Young candidate. I mean, it's a it's the, the workload for Kopech is concerning just because of what we saw last time against Kansas City and how that started. But if he comes out today, it would probably be a huge sign for the Sox if he's able to go six innings and he gets up to 116 innings. I mean, we were kind of looking at 135 being that cutoff for him. If he makes four more starts, he might eclipse that mark. This might be huge for his progress as a starting pitcher. And I'm sure the White Sox wouldn't tell you this in public, but privately, you know, they don't want him to be hurt, but the innings right there probably are right on track of what they were probably thinking at the beginning of the year, and his arm's not getting too taxed. Nothing's wrong with his arm. The problems that he's had 
are the knee problems. That's what I'm going to be looking for. First pitch last time he went out there was 89 mile per hour four seam fastball. So I knew immediately there was something wrong with him. Then he ramped it up, I think, eventually to 93. That's what I'll be looking for. His first pitch, see what it is. If it's a fastball, I need it to be in the mid 90s. If not, high 90s, you know, be a good sign that Michael Kopech is all the way back. But I'm sure his arm is fresher than he would expect at the end of the year in September. And that's good for him. And his first full year of starting, this has been an outstanding year for Michael Kopech sands the injuries. Hey, Ethan Katz told us in public that this uh, IL stint for him might have been a blessing in disguise, you know, that the White Sox were going to have to dip into that creativity that they've been pitching all year long uh, when it comes to making sure that Kopech is strong enough for the end of the year. They just kind of got it with uh, with him being able to skip a start here. They don't have to skip a start for him just kind of just for the hell of it, they got they got it uh, able to be taken care of by that injury. So obviously they wouldn't want him to be hurt. But Herb, like you said, I think everything checks out with what they want to see from him right now, and uh, they're able to get him the rest that he needed, perhaps, and uh, to to not be so uh, taxed out. They're right in striking distance of a playoff spot here. It's a guy who they would probably have uh, in that mix to start during a uh, playoff series, or if they were to get to the next one. So and Kopa mentioned to the beat yesterday that uh, his knee felt like immediately better about like a couple days after uh, being on the IL. So it, he probably didn't even need the full 15 days. So he got four days rested, recovered, and then an extra 11. So hopefully that helps him feeling fresh and recuperated. Uh, Miguel Cairo said he was hoping to get at least five innings for Michael Kopech, looking at a pitch limit of 75 to 80 in his first start coming off the IL. So if he has a no hitter, and you know he's 75 or 80 pitches in. Uh, just expect him to be yanked. Here right? we go again. Um, but here's the thing: I was. Does he get credit for one if he puts t- two, uh, two uh, like five inning uh, no hit efforts together? Well, didn't he? I mean, he had. I mean, he had like the 14 innings of two hit ball against the Yankees. So I mean, he probably has like a stretch of like. Just give him one. Six, yeah, yeah. Give him an honorary no hitter. Give I him mean, a little badge after he pitched that uh, no hitter and left the game. Uh, what after six innings that game, I think he pitched four no hit innings the next game or three no hit innings the next game. So he actually did have a no nine innings complete of no hit ball. Well, and I think I, I remember no, I remember we made a graphic for it. I think it was eight and two thirds. I think he went eight and two thirds of no hit oh. baseball from the Tigers to that next game. But then also in the previous outing, he had an out. So it would basically be like nine, nine straight innings of of no hit baseball. So Kopech's basically done it. Give him a bat. Yeah, just give it. Yeah, give, him him a ring. give it to him. Who I they pick- give the ring? to which catcher i pitched a no <laughs> all of them okay <laughs> that's what zach Does Reese can, get one? can fall back on he's like hey man i got a no hitter ring he's now a pirate Ooh, I so he, gets, that. he gets wow. to be a claimed, part of that claimed uh, today that acclaimed franchise uh, i got in my car at 135 today um having an, after having a ton of volcano thoughts um and the first thing that popped in my head was i think luis castillo can throw a no hitter today so mm. i'm gonna have my matthew cortese pick i think wow. luis castillo with what we saw the White Sox not do against Logan Gilbert's fastball, I think Luis Castillo's fastball, changeup, and slider produces a no-hitter for the Mariners. I think you're doing a reverse psychology thing. <laughs> Maybe. And the first hitter will probably get a hit off of him, and that's Elvis Andres. Uh, he doesn't have familiarity with him because, you know, Elvis Andres has been in Texas and Oakland for most of this time, and Luis Castillo has been a red. But I'm sure, you know, what uh, Luis Castillo features of sinker, changeup, slider – will be good, and, you know, and if you use that slider, it'll be very good versus the White Sox. But I think the visibility is good early in the game, and I think the White Sox will hit, and you know they hit. They have the highest average in major or the American League, so that's not going to be a problem. I don't think they'll ever get no hit. Now, no home run? You get no home run all the time. No <laughs> extra base hit all the time. I just want to <laughs> know, how much more does Luis Castillo have to do before he becomes the best Luis Castillo? Oh. We're talking about like the, the middle, Marlins second base middle infielder, yeah. yeah. But he's most known for making an error against the, the in Yankees, that Mets right? game, that Mets Yankee game. He uh, there was a pop up. Would have been like the last out. Two thousand six. It was like yeah, it would have been the last out. I think A Rod hit a pop up in the infield, and then Luis Castillo just couldn't field it. That's the most. That's the thing that Luis Castillo is the most well series. known for. I would World said, Series. I he was a World Series, series second baseman for yeah. the Marlins. <laughs> Can you name? Five players on that Marlins team. Yeah. The 03 Marlins. Craig Council. No, not no, Craig not by that's that. The 97 time. Oh, the, one. The other. Example. Oh, on the 03 which one, one are we doing? 03. Yeah, 03. The one that Luis Castillo was. Yeah. On. So you got uh, Luis Castillo, Edgar. Uh, no, Edgar. No, no, Edgar. Um, Josh Beckett. Yep. AJ yep. Burnett. Yep. Uh, Miguel Cabrera. Yep. Derek Lee. Yep. Um, one more. I think that's five. No. 
I'm counting. Cliff Floyd on that team? Preston Wilson? No. Neither of no. them? Darren Dalton. No, he's on the earlier team. Pudge. Pudge. Pudge was the catcher. Yeah, yeah. Pudge. Yeah. We also would have accepted Alex Gonzalez, other Cubs legend. Uh, Mike Lowell, Todd Hollinsworth. No, Hollinsburg. not the Cubs legend. The uh, other Alex Gonzalez is who that was. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, Mike Lowell. Jeff Conine was probably on that team. Conine? Jeff Conine was yeah. on that team. Uh, Todd Hollinsworth, uh, sure. Cubs legend. Sure. Juan Pierre, Cubs and Sox legend. Oh, Juan legend. Pierre, of course. That's uh, who I was trying to think of. Juan but. Encarnacion yeah. was also on that team. Yeah. Um, Mike Redman, and here's my favorite, White Sox legend, and we mentioned the no-hitter rings. This guy has a perfect game ring, Ramon Castro. Wow. Um, John that? Greenberg on Twitter was talking about uh, Jason, uh, the mystery bobblehead thing that we yes. saw, uh, and apparently uh, Jason Benetti mentioned to Gordon, like, oh, we should just have bobbleheads of your era. And I was, I think John Greenberg mentioned a Ramon Castro bobblehead would be nice. Sure. Uh, a Thrilla Bidge ca- uh, oh. uh, bobblehead yeah. would be nice. Chris Getz deserves a bobblehead for D-train. Project Birmingham. Yeah, the D-Train was on that team. Uh, a Juan oh, yeah. Uribe, you know, bat drop, Brad, jazz hands. Brad Penny, too. <laughs> Brad Penny. Brad Penny, Carl Pavano. Brad uh, Penny was a White Sox for like a day, right? Wasn't he in spring training with them one year? Was he? Or something? I think Brad Penny and Carl Pavano both dated Alyssa Milano. It's a fun fact. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and then she made the MLB uh, for her uh, gear. She parlayed that then to a nice career. <laughs> Alyssa Milano. I think she made... already had a nice career. I mean, yeah, she was an actress, <laughs> but then she was like, "Hey, I'm gonna be a, a clothes maker for uh, ladies who go to the game." All right. Well, shout out to Alyssa Milano. Uh, points for sports. Boss. What? She's the boss. She she was. Uh, points, but I thought that was Tony Danza. I mean, she was in the Is show. It up to the. Viewers' decision. To yeah, that's decide like, who the who's boss, the boss? Is? Question mark. It wasn't. Mona, I thought it was, was kind it of like a who shot Jr. thing. They yeah. revealed it at the end. Samantha. <laughs> Samantha. Samantha. Yeah, there he goes. He got the who's the boss down. Points bet sportsbook is counting down the days <laughs> until the football season. Hey, Scott Bayo is forty and single. Uh, Points bet sportsbook You're is counting about a down totally the, different show. Yeah. Yes, I know. He's but Chachi. Charles in charge. What? Oh, that's Scott Bayo's Chachi. And Charchi too. Yeah. Was he he not he was oh, the Tony Danza. Days. Tony Danza was Tony. Yeah. And who's the boss? Points Bet Sportsbook is counting down the days until football season with a new offer every day until the season kicks off from now until September 8th. Points Bet's Power Hour will unlock a new daily offer from 12 to 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Sign up for Points Bet now using the code CHGO to get two or three bets up to $2,000. And don't miss out on your chance to get daily access to free bets, boosted odds, and so much more now through September 8th. But that's not it. If you are a new user and make a $51 or more first-time deposit using the code CHGO, you will get your option of choosing a Midway Varsity zip-up sweatshirt or the CHGO Vintage Crew Neck. You'll also get the QB1 shirt and a free or a yearly membership to uh, CHGO and two risk-free bets up to $2,000. So take advantage of the best deal in town. It just got better. Don't... Just bet. Live your bet life at points bet. If you're someone who has a gambling problem and wants help, call 100 Gambler for crisis counseling and referral services. Obviously, I'm going to be betting on Luis Castillo to throw a no hitter. Uh, my prediction is Mariners win five to nothing. Uh, my click to pick is I think I went with Sebi because he was going to walk. Um, so that's why it's not a perfect game. Break up the perfecto. Because Sebi walks. Um, Vinny, what's your prediction? I'm going with Jose Abreu. That guy gets a lot of hits. I think he might get a m- one or two more today, uh, regardless of who ends up pitching. Uh, but, uh, you know, those shadows the other day that uh, yeah. Lance Lynn was talking about worked in his favor. I think they might work in Luis Castillo's favor today. So I think Abreu will get a few hits. I'm not willing to predict a no-hitter, but uh, I do not think the White Sox will win. I'm going to say a- another low-scoring affair, probably, let's say let's say four to nothing. I think Yohan Moncada had a good offensive day yesterday. He hit the ball 109, 107 miles per hour for two singles, went two for four. I'm going to pick him again. I think the White Sox actually get this victory for Seattle Mariners. Kopech goes out and shoves, and the bullpen holds him up. White Sox win four to two. They get some hits off of Luis Castillo in that bullpen. Okay, so for the three of us combined, we are all predicting four runs for the White Sox because you're predicting zero, I'm predicting zero. Herb's predicting four. So uh, a very optimistic take here uh, from the CHGO White Sox. Luis Castillo is good. Luis Castillo is very good. He might not be the best Luis Castillo yet, but he's pretty good. We can debate it. We'll debate that, and we'll debate serials on the postgame show. And no matter the the result, whether the White Sox score 10 runs, whether they have 20 hits, whether they have no hits, we will be here on the postgame show to tell you what happened. So join us then. Uh, Make sure you subscribe to the CHGO Sports YouTube channel and hit that notification bell uh, so you're reminded when we go live after the game. So about 10 minutes after, we will be live for your postgame show to wrap up this Mariners and Sox 
Caps series. That's Vinny Duber. You can follow him on Twitter at Vinny Duber. That's Herb Lawrence. You can follow him on Twitter at Eknerwall23. I'm Sean Anderson. You can follow me on Twitter at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. We will talk to you after the game. Go Sox.